Hi everyone, welcome back to the another video of Genius Academy. So guys, over here in this particular video, we are going to learn about the vapor compression refrigeration system. What is the application of this system? What are its advantages and disadvantages and where it is exactly used? What is the actual process of this particular vapor compression refrigeration system? So all these topics we are going to cover over here in this particular video. So guys, please watch my video till then. And guys, basically, if you are new to my education channel over here, Engineers Academy, please do consider subscribing that really motiv motivates me and uh, please click on the bell icon so whenever i upload a new video you will get instant notification and just share all my educational videos across your friends family and across the different social networking platforms so guys let's begin with our today's topic that is nothing but the vapor compression refrigeration system The very first thing that comes in our mind when we talk about the refrigeration that is nothing but the domestic refrigerator. So this particular domestic refrigerator we can like we can preserve our foods over here inside that particular enclosed container which gives the cooling effect and that ultimately preserves our food. Another thing that comes in our mind is the air conditioner, the ACs which is used from the domestic household applications up to the very much industrial applications up to the industrial uh, air conditioning systems. All the systems uh, works on the base principle that is nothing but the a particular cycle that can be called as the vapor compression refrigeration system. All of these equipments works on this particular vapor compression refrigeration system. So what is exactly a vapor compression refrigeration system is? So this stands for the vapor compression. It means a particular in an enclosed container, the vapor compression, the vapor is circulating or as precisely we can call it as a refrigerant is circulating and ultimately that particular refrigerant gives us the desired cooling effect so how so first of all like a particular in a particular enclosed system will uh, having a higher temperature it is having a heat and we have to remove that heat in order to get the desired cooling effect so let me give you an example over here suppose in an in a container or else in a particular on a floor the water is spilled and we have to remove that water from that particular floor the easiest way is to get a cloth uh, get a piece of cloth and just wipe out all the water so that cloth absorbs the water which is there on the floor and uh, like like we can like uh, and we can like uh, swipe away all that water from the floor and uh, like uh, if we twist that particular uh, cloth we, we can twist like a torsional torsion then all the water will get come out from that particular cloth so this is exactly happens over here in the case of vapor compression refrigeration systems so uh, the refrigeration refrigerant which is used over here in refrigeration system that can be used as a cloth which removes all the heat and then this particular heat is eh, that's rejected into the atmosphere so that is nothing but the twisting of the cloth we can relate the things over here so this is how the basic principle of the vapor compression refrigeration system works also guys there is another principle that is nothing but the heat flows from the hot body to cold body this particular refrigerant are typically used are nothing but the ammonia sulfur dioxide or as the freon and the most recent like the most advanced are nothing but the r22 R12, R134A. So these are nothing but the refrigerants. This particular refrigerant behaves at a normal temperature, but if we apply a certain pressure, it's uh, the boiling temperature. It's boiling uh, temperature like the in, uh, increases tremendously, and it behaves like at the normal temperature. Under the application of the higher pressure, it will give you the different readings basically. So guys, over here this is nothing but the chart which shows the boiling temperatures for this particular uh, different kinds of the refrigerants basically so this particular refrigerant are used as a ref so this particular refrigerants are used as a flowing media which flows in an enclosed cycle that is my vcrs and this particular like the recirculating refrigerant and uh, this particular refrigerant gives us the desired cooling effect so let me under let me tell you the actual process of vapor compression refrigeration system so basically this particular refrigeration system consists of the four main parts that is the compressor, condenser, evaporator 
and uh, my expansion wall over here so first the compressor the liquid refrigerant enters which is having the low pressure low temperature that enters into the compressor then compress compressor compresses that particular refrigerant up to the high pressure high temperature this particular type of the compressor which is used over here in this particular refrigeration system can be very in the domestic refrigerator we can see this hermetically sealed compressor that is the black one and uh, this particular compressor compresses the refrigerant into the higher pressure and higher temperature then that particular high pressure high temperature uh, refrigerant flows into the condenser where it is like a, it is a series of the tubes that can be condenser and this particular condenser can be of the air cooled or the water cooled so this particular refrigerant which is there in the uh, saturated uh, saturated form that is the uh, vapor form basically and this particular refrigerant gets condensed over here in this particular condenser so the high temperature high pressure uh, vapor refrigerant then it is gets condensed into the condenser the temperature gets reduced over here in this particular condenser the pressure maintains same over here so that is nothing but the high pressure side of this particular refrigeration system or so then again the temperature gets reduced or else we can call it as the uh, the phase change will occur over here that particular vapor phase gets converted into the liquid phase by the end of this uh, condenser we will get this liquid condensed uh, refrigerant basically and now this particular condenser will now this particular refrigerant will be having high pressure so now this particular high pressure uh, liquid refrigerant is allowed to pass through the evaporator in a controlled manner so this is nothing this is the reason the expansion valve is used over here now this particular expansion valve is used as a throttling process or it, it is it is allowed to expand that particular uh, refrigerant to move into the evaporator that is the further stage and uh, like in that particular evaporator the expansion will occur so this particular whole the process gets controlled by the expansion wall over here so in a controlled manner it is allowed to pass the refrigerant into the evaporator in a controlled manner basically so when this particular liquid refrigerant enters in the evaporator the temperature of the the temperature of the liquid refrigerant increases the evaporator is like the exposed into into the like the chamber that is perfectly isolated like you can imagine the or refrigerator that is nothing but the uh, and in that particular evaporator okay my liquid refrigerant is very much cooled and like the expansion will occur over here so this particular refrigerant is absorbs the latent heat of vaporization from the outer atmosphere so from from the outer atmosphere and in the outer atmosphere we will get the desired cooling effect this particular refrigerant absorb the heat from the outer atmosphere uh, just like the example i have given that is nothing but the cloth that absorbs water similar way the refrigerant absorbs the latent heat of vaporization and basically the heat flows from the hot body to cold body so this is the reason we will get the desired cooling effect at the end uh, in the evaporator basically and the evaporator becomes very much like the temperature of the refrigerant increases as it gets the heat from the outer atmosphere so this is nothing but the working of the vapor compression refrigeration system so by the end of the evaporator we will be getting the high temperature refrigerant but it is having a very much low pressure then it is again then it is allowed to go uh, pass through the compressor where the pressure increases and the temperature increases so guys this is nothing but the actual process of the vapor compression refrigeration system so this particular vapor compression refrigeration system uh, is having a certain advantages and certain disadvantages the advantages is that it is having a high performance cop coefficient of the performance and uh, this can be like uh, this is having the uh, like the uh, maintenance cost is very much less over here in this particular vapor compression refrigeration system 
This can be smaller in size and can be adapted for the very large range of the temperatures. So this is nothing but the advantages. There are certain disadvantages which is likely like uh, it is having the high initial investment cost and the refrigerant which flows through the tubes and uh, the prevention of the leak detection like of the refrigerant across the system is you know that's also another problem over here in this particular refrigeration system. So guys over here in this particular video we have seen the vapor compression refrigeration system what is the principle and what is the actual process of the vapor compression refrigeration system. So guys I hope you understood this simple topic of VCRS if you have any doubts any queries you can comment below and guys please do subscribe to my education channel Ingenious Academy. Thank you so much guys for watching this video.